profitable practices. Farm Solutions for People, Profit, and the Planet on Real Agriculture is brought to you by Farm Credit Canada and RBC Royal Bank. Hi, I'm Bernard Toba. Welcome to Profitable Practices. Today I'm in Bruce County, Ontario, visiting with beef feedlot operator Carl Frook. We're going to talk about how a biodigester he installed in 2012 helps him manage manure, his cattle, his crops, and makes the farm more profitable and sustainable. Here's my interview with Carol Frook. Good morning, Bernard. Uh, welcome to uh, Marl Creek Renewables. Uh, we're located in Brant Township, uh, which was uh, formerly uh, a township that amalgamated with the municipality of Brockton. So the town of Walkerton, Brant Township and Greenock. We're located northeast of Walkerton and we have fed cattle for a few generations and uh, we've grown it to a size of uh, an operation that, that uh, allowed you know, two families to have an income from and throughout that journey we introduced on-farm biogas in 2012 to our cattle feeding operation and it's it's been pretty it's been pretty exciting it's been fun and uh, it's also had some challenges on our farm we operate around 2200 head of beef cattle that are for beef production and then go to market and also we crop around 1200 acres and primarily for hay and corn silage or high moisture corn for feed for our cattle and that all is incorporated into an on-farm biogas plant which uh, is a 750 kilowatt per hour on-farm biogas plant uh, equivalent to 18 megawatts of electricity produced per day and we feel that the numbers that we have based on our our beef operation is producing the amount of electricity so it, they have to fit together like you have to have a you're starting out with a bit of a puzzle and you have to match your biogas production based on nutrients that you have that are being produced on your farm. Our on-farm biogas plant generates approximately 750 kilowatts of electricity to the grid every hour which is equivalent to approximately 700 to 750 homes 24 hours a day seven days a week. So Carl, tell us about how the digester works. Give us the nuts and bolts here, you know. What are you putting into the digester and, and how does energy come out the back? How does electricity come out the back? Uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty interesting and it's pretty exciting at the same time. So through anaerobic digestion, we are heating the product up that we're feeding in, which is manure and material that comes in from outside the farm, um, animal processing waste or food processing waste. and in an anaerobic digester is very, very similar to a ruminant animal. So we want to operate our digester temperature inside by heating it up thermally with uh, hot water that comes from the, the engines running off of biogas. But we want to run the, the biology at 38 to 39 degrees Celsius, which is the same temperature as a, a ruminant animal, to have the proper biology in, in the stomach or the inside of the digester. So by doing that, the, the, the fermenter or the digester heats up the product, uh, allows the de decomposition of, of organic material, manure, food waste, and one of the products that comes off of the product that you put into the digester is called biogas. Biogas has um, a methane concentration of anywhere from 60 to 65% CH4, and that is our fuel that is put through the gas engines, that spins a generator, and that's how we produce electricity out to the Ontario electricity grid. So the electricity is coming uh, out of the biodigester. Let's talk about what else is coming out of there. I mean, you've got um, some significant nutrients you're producing and some bedding. Yeah, the, the process when we started, I am gonna be very honest that we were not fully aware of the benefits behind not only our animal husbandry, but our crop production, soil health, um, the, the process of allowing us to clean out cattle in a very timely manner because we're dealing with our daily nutrients and storing it in, like directly on the farm. 
for, for the year. And behind all of that, we end up with a, a solid portion of the digestate after it's been treated. And we use that as bedding along with straw and or corn stalks for our cattle. And then also behind that is, or a, a, a balance left over is a liquid portion that is a nutrient rich, pathogen free, odorless, product for crop production. Now you talked uh, earlier uh, while we were off the screen and talking about some real nice corn yields you got last year and you're seeing some great crop production. You're really happy with, uh, with uh, the quality of those nutrients. The interesting thing from having 12 years of crop production with digestate, we call it digestate which is the liquid portion after the digester has done its process. For crop production we are finding um, quality of our crops um, we're finding that we can maintain proper nutrient value in the soil to grow a good quality high yielding crop whether it's hay or alfalfa or corn for corn silage or grain corn. Now Carol through the biogester you're also producing um, bedding and you're putting those that bedding obviously under the cattle through through your barns. Tell us about that. So not every digester I want to make it uh, clear that not every on-farm biogas plant does do separation. So what we do is after the digester has completed its process we are pulling out uh, the, the liquid portion out of the digester and then we are screw pressing out the solid portion and what that does is allows us to have a, a fibrous product that is um, it's, it's deemed fertilizer only it's a solid portion. But we feel for our farm and our cattle, we are benefiting animal husbandry by allowing a nice layer of bedding to be put underneath the cattle after they're cleaned out and then putting straw and or corn stalks on top of that to act as a nice um, comfort level for our cattle. So part of that process is if you had 100 cubic meters coming out of the digester of volume, we would screw press about 30 to 35 percent of that with solids out of that. So what it does is it, it, it's, a, it's an extra step in the process, but we feel with our farm, we are now gaining animal husbandry. It allows our pens and our cattle to stay cleaner longer. And it's, it's part of the process that now we've become uh, heavily relied upon because of how good it works. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's, uh, let's take the next step in this conversation to profitability and, and talk about the impact, you know, whether it's crop nutrients, whether it's electricity, whether it's bedding. What is it, the impact on the profitability of your farm? So with our farm, all of our cattle are, are on conventional type buildings, which means we clean out our cattle and remove the nutrients or the manure every five to seven days. Um, if we were only using straw for bedding, it would not last as long in the pens and it's tougher to keep cattle clean and comfortable on just straw alone in our operation. So as far as that goes it allows us to have a couple extra days for clean out which means we have less labor, less equipment, less fuel on cleaning out cattle. On the other note with our crop production and the nutrients that we use for the liquid portion for, for our fertilizer it allows us to manage our crop production by not having a fertilizer cost. It's, it's, it's an expense to get the fertilizer to the field and grow our crop, but we feel we're, we're, we're being better stewards for the land by putting nutrients back onto the soil. And as far as profitability in regards to biogas, um, it has diversified our farm in a way that is unique. Um, we're one of two beef feedlots in Ontario doing on-farm biogas. We're the only feedlot doing solid manure. Um, so it comes with its challenges, but it also comes with its significant benefits as well behind the scenes. So with that, we have created a diversified income on the production of electricity. Um, we heat our homes with the hot water, uh, our domestic hot water. We heat three farmhouses, so we remove any fuel costs for heating the homes. Um, it has allowed us to just manage our nutrients from our livestock 365 days a year better than we were prior to on-farm biogas. And it makes the whole operation more sustainable, I would imagine. 
Yes, correct. So by capturing methane from manure and putting it through a combustible engine, we are removing uh, greenhouse gases by 23 times to the better of the environment. You know, for other farmers who are watching here, why don't you tell them about, you know, getting started thinking about a biodigester? Any tips? Yes. Um, the biggest thing I can recommend is understanding what market you're wanting to build a digester for. Is it for the production of electricity? Is it for nutrient management, treatment of your own manure, capturing your own gas, maybe powering your farm, the economics, um, the ability to know that you have infrastructure very close by for the production of either electricity or renewable natural gas. So if you have those opportunities in your rural area and close to your farm, then that allows you to start doing some homework to see if a digester fits your farm. Mm. Well, great stuff, Carol. Appreciate you taking some time to join us on Real Agriculture. Thank you.